1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1 on and on forever. If we continue this fraction, it approaches an imaginary value. How could that possibly be? After all, this is a sequence of real numbers and it appears to approach a complex number. Where do we get that result and how do we make sense of it? To figure that out, let's look at the more tame continued fraction, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 and so on forever. If we start writing out the terms of this sequence, we'll see very quickly they start approaching this 1.618 number. You might know this as the golden ratio. And in fact, if we define this as a recursive sequence, notice if we called this quantity x, then 1 plus 1 over x would be the same as this definition. We could sort of fit x inside itself over and over and create this infinite fraction. This makes it very nice to simply solve for x, multiplying both sides of this equation by x, shuffling around the terms, and using the quadratic formula, we get these results. Now since we were only working with positive numbers, let's just throw away the negative number and have 1 plus root 5 over 2, that's that 1.6 number, also known as the golden ratio. And so we've solved for what this continued fraction could be. It's a very nice representation for phi, the golden ratio. Let's try to do the same thing with the original question. Trying to solve the continued fraction 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1 and so on leads us to an interesting result. If we define this relationship recursively, it's very similar. And just treating this like an equation with x, we can solve it in a very similar way. Multiply both sides of this equation by x, shuffle around the terms, and use the quadratic formula. Interestingly enough, in this case, our answers are complex. We get answers involving the imaginary unit i. So does that mean this repeated fraction equals one of these complex numbers? Well, not so fast. Earlier, our sequence converged. All of those iterations were approaching the golden ratio, that 1.6 number. But if we look at the iterations of this continue fraction, it's all over the place. In fact, we made a very subtle error assuming that this fraction converges at all when it doesn't. At least not if we're only considering real numbers. I do think the result is interesting nonetheless, and it makes you wonder if imaginary numbers are real anyway. If you want the answer to that question, check out the video on the screen. I think you'll get a pretty satisfying answer. I'll see you in that one.